Have a good education. You do feel intimidated when they're standing there with their hats and scarves and whatever they wear. And you can't see their faces and then they put their backs to you. Say their homes were being attacked. My children have never three stones going down that road. I've walked them, we've walked down, they've never lifted a stone, I've never lifted a stone. I don't like Catholics walking up the Ardoin Road. Normal Catholics, like myself a normal Catholic mother that I am, nothing else. So I am trying to get my church a normal farmant and that's it. To get a right to an education for them. We go up the Ardoin Road and all the people's has your back to you and some of them are looking at you. Sometimes they're shouting at you and sometimes they're fighting with the police and then when you get into school some people are crying and the teachers tell you that you're safe and all in school. To me they're sad people. I would like to know why John White was standing up for the day when he comes from the lower shackle. Why was he standing there? I don't know who else was standing up there. You fancy them back after a break? Mm-hmm. And what about the protesters? Nervous? Yeah. My name's Lisa Irvine. I'm 34. I'm a single parent. I have a daughter, Shannon. She's nine. It's good. She's primary six. OK, let's go. I've been working more or less when she was three. At one time, I've actually done three jobs to support her, you know? Mum, well, we went to Holy Cross in Chief Street, and then I went to Holy yeah. Cross, and now Shannon's at it, and hopefully her children will go to it if she's still living in the area. I would love for her to go into higher education. If that's her ambition, I'll be behind her 100%. There's nobody pulling my strings. There's no Sinn Féin involvement in my life. I want to walk my daughter to school, and that's the end of the story. I would defend, and defend to the death anybody's right to take their child to school no matter what religion they are. I honestly don't see why grown men and women would find it uh, justifiable to come out and hurl abuse, glass bombs, urine-filled balloons at young girls. you heard is a big bang and people screaming and then everybody started running off for the school and when everybody got into school they were in like in hysterics and all and they were both like that and they didn't want to come into school and they wanted to go back down home. I asked her one time how she felt and she said she felt like her heart had been ripped out and she didn't have any feelings left and she just doesn't want to talk about it. She's just accepted this now that this is the way these people are. And that there's not, that she didn't do anything to bring it about in the first place, and there's certainly not anything she can do to end it. I feel safe now because my mummy's with me, and my mummy will always take care of me, whatever um, happens. They were calling our children Fenian scum. I mean, you've seen children with spittle running down their faces. These are grown men and women, you know, calling young children and their parents scum and big ears and fatso and, you know, I honestly, it is raw, naked sectarian hate. It's the European Year of the Child, which completely appears to have escaped the people of Glenburn. So I honestly wouldn't, wouldn't know how to explain it to anybody other than our presence you know, we're Catholics and we're walking through a Protestant area and in some way that offends people. There are people going to bed at night thinking, I'm going up tomorrow, uh, getting up tomorrow to go and protest against young children going to school. How do you raise them with people like that? It saddens me because, you know, we were the lost generation. We didn't know any peace growing up. We had ranting and shooting and, you know, these children are hope for the future. They weren't supposed to grow up like this. I wouldn't like her to be sectarian or bitter or bigoted. Um, you know, I, that's the way I've raised her. And that's the way I want her to be. For years we've been fighting in this country for civil rights and equality. I'm not a second-class citizen. My daughter's not a second-class citizen. As far as I'm concerned, apartheid has been abolished. 
So why then should I be sneaking in and out of that door just to get the right to an education? I think that the silence from politicians has been deafening. I think that the, especially, you know, bigger politicians on a wider scale, n you know, nobody will come out. This is not a grey issue. This is black and white. This is wrong. What they're doing to young children is wrong. If the children were black, the whole world would be up in arms about this. They don't really know what they're doing and they don't really know what they're saying, but I, I know they don't mean it. But whatever they do, I'll always forgive them. My name's Andy Cooper. I'm a resident in Hesketh Park, married with a 12-year-old son, and we're expecting another child in May. I became involved with concerned residents of Upper Ardoin after the 19th of June, the incident that sparked the problems that we have on the Ardoin Road. One of the youth threw up a ladder with a flag. I heard this guy's car revving up. I looked behind me. He, sw he pulled up the pavement and tried to knock me and the other two down. And I uh, just missed this lamppost. I uh, took off at speed, dropped the youth off just behind you there. And uh, me and Han break the car and come back down. We were standing just about here to the right, sort of way protecting ourselves behind the lamppost. And uh, he mounted the footpath once again and uh, pulled into the street just behind me. So we started running like, back up this way. Questions have to be asked of them, of why they did it, what was their strategy behind it, and what was the agenda that they were on. The agenda that appears to be given since the 3rd of Sept September is that this community is attacking the Catholic girls of the Holy Cross. That there is wrong, that they are not. Um, the way they view what has happened is that people who escort those children uh, along the Ardoin Road every day are those that were involved in that attack, attack on the 19th of June and subsequently since the 19th of June. I've been a window cleaner in the Ardoin area and the upper Ardoin area for now about eight, nine years and I've lost a third of my business from the nationals proportion of that their business. I made the decision myself rather than being intimidated into it, but I feel intimidated into it by the situation that we have. I believe for them it's about territory. For the protesters here, it's about uh, conflict on the Ardoin Road. It's about conflict that little children from the ages of four to 11 years of age, both Protestant and Catholic, are being drawn into, and are being drawn into it by a Republican element that wants to use the Holy Cross school. I'll not bring my child in front of a TV camera because I don't believe it's in his best interest to do that there. And the one thing that concerns me is how people can put their children in front of television cameras. To have them used, oh, this is the problem, oh, my child's suffering. All children should never suffer, no matter what religion they are. But our children are suffering too. They're not interested, Stuart, in um, trying to calm this situation down. They're only interested in up on the ante. They're deliberately trying to provoke this community. Yeah, I think they are. Uh, but then again, they've, they've spent uh, 10 weeks provoking this community, so what's unusual now? The thing is, if there's less police on the road, it weakens the trauma to the children, it weakens their they're argument. Not, they're not interested in weakening the trauma for their children. Don't forget, it's all about, to, to them, it's uh, about as much trauma they can cause. It better, betters their cause, as far as they're concerned. To deal with the issues of paramilitaries that are, have been seen in the road, well, that would be to do with the Loyalist Commission. And the Loyalist Commission was set up to try and protect Protestant rights where they believed that uh, there were things that were going wrong within Protestant areas where they needed protection and whatever. To try and address that issue in a peaceful and dignified manner, we have done our best throughout since September 3rd. We, the, the actual residents have done their best to try and address every problem that the protest has, you know, has come up from the protest. Their concern, the national concerns with regard to the protest, the shouting, the whistles, uh, the horns and so on, any concerns that they have, we've, we've genuinely tried to deal with them the best way that we can. But it appears, as we've seen this week, that we've managed to actually get it to a stage where nothing's been said, no whistles, nothing being thrown, um, even no posters, and it's still not good enough. It's 
question. I've got to ask what is good enough. And when the kids are doing the only thing that's good enough, it's a three goal life. It also states, and you have to have the right to do whatever they want. I'm going to have to My name is Aidan Soy. I'm a member of the Passions Congregation. And on the 27th of July this year, I came to Holy Cross Parish and became chair of the Board of Governors of this school. There's no connection between me coming here and how I find myself involved in now. But on mornings I say to her, I wonder, am I dreaming this? Or is this true? And when I look at South Africa, when I look at the Alabama station, when I start to take it over, I have to quickly say to her that this is something in the past. There was an incident around five times, some incident with a car pushing against the ladder, people standing in confrontation with each other, obviously one more left than another, the end of the book in the car, people chase each other, the children were getting out of school at that moment, and of course they have to be terrified to see their parents in a standoff in the hands of the residents, and you feel like the residents in school in a standoff with the parents. If I saw evidence that the parents were using these children for the child, I wouldn't walk away. I could say that quite quickly. But the fundamental human rights issue, and it's also a fundamental educational issue, because I think the lesson that children are being given is this, that they have to struggle for the most fundamental rights of education. I think there's a very, very narrow bound that this time is in English, particularly for the children that are in front of school. We have shown ourselves to be good people and always remember that. That you have done nothing wrong. You the school is absolutely blindingly clear. The children of this school have a statutory right to come to school with their parents as their parents do. They have been told for 10 weeks you shall not do that. I think you really understand why now you'd have to get inside the mind of the people who are actually doing this. It could well be um, a, a sense that, you know, almost like taking a last stand, that we're going to stand this piece of ground. The problem, as I say, is that I can understand how you might have to go into ground and have to try and reassure people that, you know, there's no ground plan, for instance, by the Catholic Church. I don't need any ground plan by national to go and take over anything. But what I do think you have to do is you have to look and say, but we can't take this on the back of these little children going to school. It's portrayed as if there were two equal sides. But my question always is this, and I say this sincerely, you can't have a situation with children. You can't ask anything a small girl to solve this issue. And that's my difficulty with some of the language that's now being used about this. It's almost being portrayed like we could solve this if we had more reasonable people on the national side who would recognize that we were very legitimate case. I can say, you may well have a legitimate case, but you don't have a legitimate case while the children are still in the middle. I feel that the right to protest and the right of children to go to school are being kept in equal balance. And that in one sense, the policing of crime can soon be guaranteeing the right to protest every bit as much as protecting the children's right to go to school. And I think that's a very dangerous situation in society. When I see children sit on the street, when I see children who are absolutely terrified out of their minds, then I think the legitimacy of protest is due. Should these protesters not be screened off? I mean, this has happened before. There are so understanding patients with guns. Why, why are they facing that? Do the children offer a threat? In the, all the months of this dispute, no child has thrown a bomb. No child has thrown balloons. No child has thrown fraud in the And yet we face every morning with a security threat. And almost before we put a step on the road, we're almost criminalized. The protest has got both back. Absolutely. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any advantage in putting that issue. And that's not meant to be correct. And if I thought it was damaging, I would have been 
but I think we've got to have this much back. I'm the Chief Superintendent Roger Marshall. I'm the District Commander for North Delta. I have responsibility for all policing within North Delta. Some police officers are on first and foremost account. Um, I see small children from the ages to ages going up and down that road. And I believe that many of the police officers who are there are parents. And we find it incredibly difficult um, to, to be detached from the whole thing. So what we're trying to do is achieve a balance there. There are children who go up and down to the primary school, and we're trying to facilitate those children every bit as much as the children who are going to the Holy Cross primary. We're also trying to facilitate those people who have a legitimate business in the area to go about that business without any hindrance. I can tell you who's not to blame, and the people who are not to blame are these tiny children who are going up and down that road. The children have rights in this, the children have no responsibility. Uh, and that is the, the purpose of our operation, is to ensure that these children get up and down that road in complete safety. Okay, the situation is the same as we agreed at the beginning this morning. Things are calm here, there's no great difficulties. The children and their parents have now made their way to school, and we're waiting for them to come down to collect the we tried the election of June on, on the first day, um, and I have to say it was really a limited success. Um, and we tried to do the, the, the time involved, but, but really uh, it was a lot of election. The protest is over this last number of days. It has been further back. back. Um, we, what we have been trying to do is create a situation where people take responsibility for their own actions. Uh, and we are pleased to see that the women have got in secured only in maintaining a distance, an appropriate distance, between those protesters and the parents and children going up and down the road. We have tried to soften our profile to make it um, less intimidating for these children. We have moved from a situation where we had rat schools and, and helmets and being pushed head over to a situation now where my officers are wearing forage caps and reflective beds. Well, the only two people that can saw it besides uh, your community and their well, community. We, the police, are caught in the middle, so we're trying our best to prepare for this after a whole, uh, a whole trip. So, please, that's all we can ask you to try. When allegations are, are made of a particular nature, what we try and do is to be able to beforehand to get an idea of who is there and, and what is happening. As the Chief Constable said on many occasions, speaking of human activity, on occasions we do get it wrong. Uh, uh, there's, there's no denying that, but perfectly, perfectly honestly, we get it right more often than not. We do our very, very best in an incredibly difficult situation. There were distressing scenes this morning. Some of the parents had attempted to walk along the pavement to school, but were moved off it by the police. Well, unfortunately, I can't discuss that specific incident because I understand that incident has now been uh, so is it now the subject of a complaint to the police ombudsman? They wish to walk on the footpath. There's not illegal to walk on the footpath. Right? Walking on the road is unacceptable to us as well. We're not second class citizens. Yeah. Mark, we, we need to talk about all those sorts of issues. The sooner we can do it, the better. It is poisoning the atmosphere right across North Belfast. It is damaging, possibly irreparably, the community relations, relationships between the two communities and relationships between the communities and the police. My name is Harry McConnell. Uh, I'm a father of three. I'm a youth worker in the area. Uh, I've been asked to be present here by the community in the area uh, to observe uh, what is happening at the present time. Certainly it is distressing, yes. Um, but you have to understand as well that it is not a child issue. You know, uh, unfortunately with that many police presence, the police presence there, the army presence there, that too is bringing the children under stress. That's bringing Wheatfield children under stress as well. I mean, there's children go to Wheatfield school that actually they don't want to go to school now. They're crying. They're seeing the police to see what the police do, to see what the army do and that there. It's bringing stress on all children. Ashley, she's uh, coming up seven years old. She goes to Wheatfield school. We say to her, like, you know, we're not doing this for, you know, to stop the little girls going up to school. 
we're doing this for, you know, because there is bad people walks up the road and in case, you know, they throw something at you or maybe, you know, take something out of their pockets or anything like that. There. It is hard to they explain to her why, you know, the police are there with the riot shields and things because she was really frightened because they used to push us down into the streets and, you know, and more or less and, uh, maybe raise the buttons and maybe some people hit. I mean, I was hit a few times myself. Last night, an 18-year-old soldier of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers was critically injured when he was hit by a blast bomb thrown by loyalists. Another was thrown into the back of a Catholic home nearby. I do condemn it. But some of that responsibility has to lie with the police uh, and the army as well for their actions they did take on the Friday. An incident did occur where actually women and children were beaten by both the army and by the police on the Friday. A few incidents did happen where a child, a six month old baby in a buggy, was threw aside by police as if you would throw your bin later out into the bin. That's why, in my opinion, well, that's why it isn't happening on the Friday night with the soldier. It was a response to the police action of that Friday. Basically, I think we're, we're the easiest to touch. Uh, the Protestant people always were. It's easier getting into the Protestant people. Um, it's less of a, a comeback, if you want, from, from that. But that did change the Friday the soldier was hit. Every day up there, they come up the road, one, twos, whatever groups. There's nothing we, we nothing we can do about it at all. A peaceful protest, standing there doing nothing, no abuse coming from any, coming from the side. As I said, it's just a protest, it's just a peaceful protest, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, that will continue. The situation can be resolved tomorrow. I mean, there's two ways it can be resolved. I mean, one is putting the security gate up. That would benefit both communities from being attacked, uh, that would make people secure in your eyes. Uh, the other way that a suggestion was put forward would be transporting the, the children and buses to the school. And if that there did happen, the situation would end. At the present time, you have to take it into consideration that the, the trust is, isn't there on both sides of the community. I mean, the nice ones are no different than what we are, in a sense, but it's it's half the respect in each other's, each other's community, each other's culture, if you want. And as long as we start to understand that. But it's, as I say, it's give and take. It's give and take on both sides. My name's Anne Tanney, and I'm the principal of Holy Cross Girls Primary School. And I have been here since the school opened on this site in May 69. This has always been a very happy and hard-working school and we have been very, very, very conscious of the fact that we are a Catholic school in a loyalist area and we have tried to open our hands in friendship to our neighbours. We're very proud of the school. We have a very good camogie team, netball team, choir and we have lovely children and lovely parents. We're very proud of them. They're lovely children. We are very pleased that Archbishop Tutu came to see us. Uh, he prayed with us and um, he showed us that he cared about us too. Isn't that a very red uniform? All of us around the world have been very distressed at what's been happening here, especially that although there may be reasons on all sides, uh, it's such a distressing feature of it all that. The children have been pawns. We also had a letter from Hillary Clinton, and uh, she has said that she has been thinking about us and that uh, she's been praying that we get back to normal. And we have had hundreds of letters and gifts and cards and prayers from all over the world. And we are very heartened by this, and we will try and respond to all of these letters. We love reading your cards that you sent us, and we are very pleased with them. When we come into school every day, it makes us feel happy to know that you care about us. We love reading your cards and letters. They put me in a good mood. They are beautiful. I love them. We are very frightened and scared sometimes. We have had some children leaving, I think about nine, specifically because of the troubles. 
unfortunately people have thought that there was another way into the school that we had another entrance at the back but we don't have and it's much longer and it's very inconvenient and with the pram it is nearly impossible to come that way so it isn't an entrance to the school at all i think it's absolutely disgraceful that children should come to school like this and that they should have to live with this kind of fear i feel overwhelmingly this great sadness because i can see that the children are being affected I can see that they're upset, I can see they're worried, I can see some of them are coming into school in fear and now they're beginning to feel fear during the day in school. Normally we could settle them down when they go back to their own routine they seem to be alright but more recently I can see that even during the day they're quite frightened about what might happen next. It's very difficult to deal with this when it continues to go on and on. They talk about post-traumatic stress and how to deal with that. But this is not post-traumatic, this keeps going on, so we can't really start a healing process until this stops. I think absolutely nothing can justify this protest, because the protesters are saying that this is not about children, but it is children who are being targeted, and it is children who are being hurt. And I just want to say to them that these children are being hurt, and if you don't want to affect children, and if this is not about children, please stop, and let's get the other problems sorted out. Let adults get together and sort those problems out, and leave the children out of it. I think the solution is just to let, let the children come to school. Let the parents choose, as they've always chosen, how to bring their children to school. People who read about it or who look at it on television don't realise just how serious it is and how, uh, how much it can affect you. Even adults have come here and started to cry because they've been so affected by the situation. So you can imagine how children must feel in this. I suppose it is being tolerated. This is the sad thing about it. I thought it just couldn't go on. I thought when it started that uh, people would say, oh, this is just intolerable in a civilised society. This is not going to go on. It can't go on. But unfortunately, it has been going on. And that is the amazing thing about it. And I suppose it shows again that there's something really wrong in our society when that can happen. Mm -hmm.